Welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 9s for your English lesson to start off the week. I hope that you're ready. Any queries, concerns or just general questions you might have, please remember you can contact, as you can see on the screen, grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com. We'll try and answer your questions, try and make sense of anything that you might be unsure about. Right, so welcome as I've said to you. Today we have a bit of a change of pace. Last week, if you had joined for the lessons, you would have seen we concentrated a lot on language elements. So we did visual literacy advertising and then visual literacy cartoons. Today we're delving into literature. I hope you're excited. What you'll need for today, pen, paper, and imagination. I think anything to do with literature, you need to be able to go to some type of imaginative place in your mind. Right, and to make it a bit more specific, we are going to be doing poetry. Right, now please don't think, this is terrible, I'm switching off right now, I'm telling my mom that the lesson froze, something went wrong. No, poetry is amazing. There is such a place in society for poetry. I've seen a lot of quotes and I've seen this a lot on social media during this time of self-isolation that when we are forced to be secluded, we turn to movies, series, reading. Those are all elements of literature, storytelling mediums. And poetry is just another one of those. I'm not sure if you guys would have watched Dead Poets Society. It is brilliant. It's an old movie for your generation. But do yourself a favor. I'm going to show you a little excerpt of it now. But seriously, watch this movie. If anyone can convince you, more so than I can, that poetry is amazing. Robin Williams can do it. All right, so this, like I said, is just a short part or a short little snippet of the movie. Words and language. No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Now, see that look in Mr. Pitt's eye, like 19th century literature has nothing to do with going to business school or medical school, right? Maybe. Mr. Hopkins, you may agree with them, thinking, yes, we should simply study our Mr. Pritchard and learn our rhyme and meter and go quietly about the business of achieving other ambitions. A little secret for you. Huddle up. Huddle up! We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, oh me, O oh life of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. The powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? Okay, guys, so quite profound. What will your verse be? So it's almost as though poetry can be an extension or an understanding of what you offer life. Right, I know very deep. Okay, so what we are going to be covering today, we are going to look at two poems. One is called Hope is the Thing with Feathers. I thought 
Hope is something we all need in this time and we need to hang on to the hope that soon we'll be able to all see each other again and it has quite a relevance to what we're going through. Then I'm looking at rain in summer. I also thought this poem rings true to something that was very, very prevalent in our lives last year, still not completely out of it, and that's when we had a drought. While we look at the two poems, we are going to break down certain elements. We'll look at figures of speech, simile, metaphor, personification. We'll look at rhyme scheme. And then we'll also look at sound devices, alliteration, assonance, onomatopoeia. Please always remember how to spell onomatopoeia. I know it's one that catches out a lot of students. And just something before we move on, just remember one poem is never going to cover all figures of speech, all sound devices. That's impossible. So when we look at a poem, we extract what we can identify, but don't force something that isn't there. All right, so the first poet who we are looking at today is Emily Dickinson. The reason that I've put a picture of a famous actress here is because Hayley Steinfeld played Emily Dickinson in a movie very recently, and they look so similar. So go Google it, you'll see. It's actually quite um, scary how similar they look. And um, Emily Dickinson, she was very much a recluse. In other words, she kept to herself, she isolated herself from people. So again, I thought, well, someone who self-isolates and who's writing about hope, it cannot be any more like what we're feeling now. Right, and Emily Dickinson wrote this poem long ago, so it just shows how poets spoke to centuries ahead. And also just something with Emily Dickinson, she suffered from anxiety, and that's something that kept her very much away from people, and poetry was her way of reaching out. So again, something we can all probably relate to on some level. I'm going to read the poem, Hope is the thing with feathers. And then we'll start looking at the breakdown. We'll also just have an overview of what the poem is actually about. Okay, I'm going to just have a little bit of sound in the background to kind of just emphasize and resonate with what the poem is all about. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all and sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm I've heard it in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea yet never in extremity it asks to crumb of me all right guys this poem is it's it's very very positive which i know a lot of poetry i've noticed that i teach in school is often quite negative it's about war and death and this one is like i said very positive right i want you to pause here And I want you to take a minute, look at what the poem is about, or read the poem again to yourself. And I want you to write down any ideas, even words, concepts. What do you think this poem or poet is telling you? Right, pause now. We'll have a look at it. Right, a lot of information on the screen, so don't stress. So what we are looking at here is that hope is being compared to a little bird. You know, you can see a bird right there for you. And what the poet is trying to tell us is that, and I'm looking here at the slide, is that this bird, this feathery creature, this hope, it will always continue to sing in the 
stormiest of storms, the most traumatic days, the worst days, this bird will always be there. And now I want you to have a look at what it says here. The poem is then arguing that hope is miraculous. Hope, it's always there for us, so we should never lose hope. It's something in us that we all possess, and it just brings about a deeper understanding and a deeper appreciation of life. Told you, it's a powerful poem. So the figures of speech. In this poem, you'll notice that hope is compared to a bird. Hope perches, um, it's feathery, this bird flies, it sings. And so that is a comparison. Hope compared to a bird. No like or as used. It's a direct comparison. Right. And I think, remember, you always have to question why. I think it's quite a, an intriguing concept that hope of all things was compared to a bird. But a bird symbolizes freedom. So I think that's also a good way to look at how hope gives you freedom. If you're positive and you hope, it really makes life a lot easier. It makes life take on more of an understanding. All right, then personification. As you know, personification is giving an inanimate, non-living object some type of human characteristic. Now hope as a concept, it cannot perch, it cannot sing, it cannot speak to you. In the poem it tells us it can, but we know it can't. But what the poet is doing is saying that hope is so important, it is like a person who is asking you, or actually sorry, who's not asking you anything, it is just giving. Okay, now we look at sound devices. So obviously sound, what you can hear. Quite a lot of alliteration in the poem. You'll see with alliteration, it's always the consonant sounds repeated. Strangest, C, S and S. Have, heard, H and H. Without words, W, W. Saw must be the storm. Okay, so they don't always have to be next to each other, just in the same line. And then that sound comes through. Um, obviously, alliteration, it's not just there for fun. It actually brings about tone and emotion. So saw must be the storm. You know, those are harsh words. It makes me think of pain. And that's what the poem was saying, that even in pain, in trauma, Hope is there. You just have to let it in. Assonance, also the sound repetition, but this time vowels. So you can see there is the thing with. I, I, I is repeated. That obviously comes from the title. Hope is the thing with feathers. No onomatopoeia very, um, all comes through from this poem. Again, don't force it. So the metaphor we looked at was that hope is compared to a bird. Hope is also personified because it's so important. And then we have the sound devices showing us that even in the darkest of times, hope will never give up on you. So in other words, don't give up on hope. Rhyme scheme confuses people. I've, I've noticed this and it can be confusing. Um, you know, you really have to look back and go to this word and that word, but let me try and just break it down for you. Rhyme scheme will always refer to the last word in the line. So just so you know, we are looking only at the last words. So in other words, feathers, soul, words, all, herd, storm, bird, warm, land, sea, extremity, me. Okay, so we're looking at the last word. What you'll always do is you'll go and put A right at the beginning. Obviously, first letter of the alphabet. So feathers is A. Now you go look. Does anything else in the poem rhyme with feathers? No. So I'm not going to have another A. 
Now we look at soul, B. All right, so we see here, okay, we lab label it B. What rhymes with soul? All, soul, all. The whole sound rhymes. So I give that also a B. But now go back, you can't leave gaps. Words, I give a C because it's the next letter. Now nothing else rhymes with words. So now I've got A, B, C, B. What's my next word here? Heard. Okay, heard, no, it's new. So D. Then I go C. Does anything rhyme with heard? Oh, yes. Bird rhymes. So also D. Can't leave anything out, so I go back to storm. What does storm rhyme with? Warm. All right, so do you see how you pick up? So the best thing to do, start with A, scan through your poem. Move on to the next letter. Scan through your poem. All right, and so then what you'll see with this poem is that the last three lines rhymed. You've got C, extremity, me. So G, G, G. All right, I hope that helps a little bit with how you can break it down. Rhyme scheme is important for rhythm. It normally tells you if it's a fast paced or slow paced poem, which also ties in with emotion. Usually the sad poems are quite slow paced and all those things work together to bring the poem across. Okay, so that was hope is the thing with feathers. Hope will never leave you. It's like a little bird that flies no matter what the weather or the circumstances. You just have to let hope be there for you. Okay, so quite a beautiful poem. Our next poem, our poet, is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, a mouthful. And um, also, I guess, one of the more traditional olden day poets. And he was part of what was known as the Fireside Poets. They were five poets, quite rebellious in nature. And they wrote about social conventions of the time. And as you can see here, the reason they were called fireside poets, it really came from the fact that um, families would sit around the fire reading their stories and their poems. So they became known almost like the secret club of poets. And he's also very encouraging in his poems, most of them. He encourages that you live life to the fullest. So he feels you take every moment, you don't waste it, and you make sure you live life. Okay, so his poem we're looking at is Rain in Summer. Like I said, you remember the droughts. We had to face a very dry summer um, last year and year before, which put us in quite a, a precarious circumstance last year. We were very lucky that it didn't get to a point of day zero, but we still have to be careful with our water usage. Okay, I'm going to read the poem to you. Let's put some cool rain sounds in the background. Let's just hope it works properly this time. All right, rain in summer. How beautiful is the rain after the dust and heat in the broad and fiery street. In the narrow lane, how beautiful is the rain. How it clatters along the roofs like the tramp of hoofs how it gushes and struggles out from the throat of the overflowing spout. Across the window pane, it pours and pours, and swift and wide with a muddy tide. Like a river down the gutter roars, the rain, the welcome rain. All right, so even though it's summer, the rain is very, very welcome because it's obviously providing some cool relief in this poem. It's a very simple poem, very much all about how nature is extraordinary and how even in summer nature knows what to give us. Again, besides the droughts, I'm sure you would have seen as well on social media, a lot of people are commenting on how nature is all of a sudden thriving. If you go and Google pictures in Venice, for the first time in years, the canals are transparent, it's blue, it's beautiful. So again, we really need to appreciate what nature gives because we're not in control. And so this poem again highlights that natural elements of the world. 
Okay, so rain in summer takes a very close look at the impact of a summer shower on everyone. Um, rain in summer, it's, it's truly a love letter to nature, right? And it just conveys how appreciative we should be of what nature offers us. Okay, again, we're going to look, and this poem has all three figures of speech that we're analyzing today. I'm sure you know that a simile will always start with like or as, or not start with, sorry, but like or as will be in that actual um, comparison. So yeah, the rain that falls on the roof, it's compared to, or it's said to be like a tramp of hooves. I'm sure you've heard that sometimes at night when you're trying to sleep and that rain is just on your roof and it sounds like a tramp. You can maybe even think a tramp of horses or coming across your roof that very loud noise also like the river down the gutter so we all know when your gutters overflow and the water actually makes like this river coming through so those are similes or comparisons using like now if we look at the metaphor metaphors are a little bit more difficult because there's no like or as but it's still a comparison in this comparison Water is being compared to, or it's said to be splattering out the throat of an overflowing spout. Now that's comparing it to a kettle. So almost as though your kettle's boiling or you've got too much water and it overflows out of the spout. All right, so there's our metaphor, comparing the water falling to rain coming out of a kettle. No like or as. Then personification. The water is said to be roaring. Now, a water can't make that sound. Um, yes, we can hear it, but you can't give water the quality of being able to roar. Right? So we're giving it a quality of something that's, I know you're thinking lion, but even think a person. A person can roar. Um, again, don't laugh at my sound device. But um, this personification there is turning and giving um, the water a living aspect. All right, sound devices, river, roars. So that R sounds also quite harsh, but it makes you think of a loud sound. So this roaring river of rain coming down. There was no direct assonance. Again, we're not forcing what's not in the poem. Onomatopoeia, it says that it clatters on the roof. And that clatters immediately brings that sound. All right, so you can imagine almost like hail, hail falling on your roof, and it clatters like that. That's the sound that onomatopoeia brings across. All right, so we've had simile, metaphor, personification, alliteration, onomatopoeia. Let's have a look at the rhyme scheme. All right, so again, as we said last time, go and plot your A at the beginning. So A, rain. So now let me look. What else rhymes with rain? Oh, there's another rain. Oh, and I've looked here, lane. Okay, great. All the way down. Pain. Rain, again. So I have to give all of those A's. Now we go all the way back to B. Heat. Okay, heat rhymes with street. So we got a B. Look, 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 look. No, nothing else. Okay, now I can skip ahead to my C. Roofs, hoofs, nothing else. Then the next one is out, spout, pause. Oh, and pause goes with roars, and then wide and tight. So once you start with your A and you work down, B, work down, it just makes it a lot easier for you. Okay, so what we did today was look at two quite classical poems. I wonder if you guys have heard about slam poetry. Now, slam poetry is big in America. They actually have tournaments. This um, video I'm going to show you now is amazing. She won the um, teen poetry slam finals. And really, if you guys are looking to YouTube or look up something after this, look up slam poetry. Come up with your own one. I'm going to press play here. Let's hope for the best that it works with the sound. But this is really inspirational to think that teens are doing this. Societal sculptures fade away like water paint on a leaf.
clean canvas. The mixture of colors makes me anxious, but I swear, I know what pure grace is. We live in a world where the mindset is money. You kill bees, but ask for honey now. Why would you kill what has the power to create and sustain? I notice we love to complain about pain, but no one mentions the thrill and the gain. The belly of the beast is no stranger to scars. Holds an undeniable hunger, and sometimes I question why the only way to feed the beast is fight violence with more violence. Enticing fire to seek prey and annihilate, cause chaos but expect silence. Forced compliance, half these people ain't never felt the purest ray of sunshine. A natural remedy for the blues, making poetry exist from soil. Showing me a glimpse every morning, nothing but green, animals roaming free, our air is clean. We don't fear the spirited flames of fire. We learn how to move with the grace of water. Maybe start swimming a little stronger. There's no need to tread the surface. You allow your body to move with the current. There's no bullets devouring the skin of any living being. Guns loaded, cigarette smoking, finger on the trigger. Angry boy sees daddy with gun, learns to shoot. Daddy says, get the job done, waters the bullet with tears and grows a man out of that gun, bullets for blood, angry man bleeds a lot, became embodiment of gun, positioned around every corner like a shy shadow, only seeking to be seen when the deterioration stops manifesting, this skin is still alive but not for long. This world managed to teach guns how to sing our song and my song is fading. And I think the reason humanity is failing is you're a fool to think you'll prosper if you aren't a product of pollution and slaughter. They cut down trees to make buildings, build stores to sell trees, identify ocean as wasteland, dumping their truths for safekeeping, hoping the current will take it deep enough to never resurface. Built an army, labeled it factory, told the soldiers they're fighting for salary. This is how they get away with legalized slavery. Grooming human beings into machines, giving them survival of the fittest mentality, mastering the art of rapid strategy. An international game of Russian roulette, a death duet. Shoot the last man standing, a masterpiece. A sculpture of what's yeah, well, left so, of society. I mean, that I was able to give it back to that's really powerful. You really need to go and look up some slam poetry as soon as you're done with your um, first your activity after this lesson. Okay, so as I've said here, yeah, write your own poem. It's not as difficult as you think. When you saw the young um, teenager, the young lady giving her rendition of slam poetry, it wasn't a perfect rhyme. Some of it was thought fragments. It's beautiful what you can come up with if you just think of what matters to you. And obviously what matters to her is not having a voice in the society that she just feels is falling apart. So good luck to you guys. Write a poem. Write something that matters. Always remember, painting is silent poetry. And poetry is a painting that speaks. Right, poetry speaks out the colors and the vivid images of what you are reading. Okay, thank you grade nines for listening today. I hope that you enjoyed the poetic journey on which we went. I hope that you were able to take something from it, even if this is just inspiration to write your own poem. Alright, thanks for watching grade nines. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud, by me, Mrs. Nortier. I'll see you guys soon for the very next lesson.